So there are a few more things about the Linux kernel that I would like us to remember or be able to imagine as we move forward in this series. So, okay, first things first, let me get myself up here. All right, so we were talking about, you know, things that we need to remember or we should know about the Linux kernel. So first off, the Linux kernel, uh, I'll just write it as kernel here. Uh, it kind of operates in a privileged mode. What does privileged mode mean? Uh, it means that, you know, the Linux kernel uh, and obviously the kernel here has drivers as part of it. So the kernel can reach out to the hardware. Right. And this is important uh, because, well, the Linux kernel is kind of one of the features is that it helps us uh, manage the hardware. But the question is, uh, why can't a user application manage the hardware directly? Well, the answer to that is we would not like um, the application to kind of take full control of the hardware. Then it, it can do whatever it wants. That is number one. Uh, and we would want to restrict it. We would not want it to do whatever it wants with the hardware whenever it wants with, uh, to do, you know. Uh, we wouldn't want that. And the second thing is we would like multiple applications to share a hardware for example let's say we have the solid state drive the solid state drive has let's say some partition on it and partition has various files on it and then there are different applications uh, that are wanting to access you know different files so all of them are essentially now wanting to access the ssd as a hardware uh, so you know, we wouldn't want one application to own the SSD or have like a lock on it or mess around and use it in whichever fashion it wants. We would want somebody to provide like a very nice, you know, serialized and managed access to it. So that's one of the reasons the kernel running in the privileged mode has access to the hardware. And as you can guess, the applications run in unprivileged mode. So that then means that the application needs to talk to the driver, right? And application somehow needs to convey its intentions that, hey, I want to read this camera and can you, you know, copy over the, the buffer, the video buffer or the frame, so to speak, uh, uh, to me, right? Can you, can you give me that frame that's available in the camera? So the user application here needs to talk to the driver to do any interaction uh, with the hardware now around this point i want to kind of just present a case uh, for you know how cpus are and that will add like more uh, clarity so cpu for example the arm a v8 um, based on the v8 architecture the arm a class of cpus the 64 bit one and we also have like a free course on this uh, and that you can check and learn more about these CPUs. So the ARM A CPUs has something called execution levels and the execution, or oh, sorry, not execution, exception levels. And the exception levels are like EL1, EL0, EL1, EL2, and EL3. Now the Linux kernel in this case runs in EL1, right? And uh, as you can imagine, as part of the execution level one, um, the hardware, the CPU is designed in ways that it can access different features uh, of the CPU. For example, the status, uh, like, you know, it was the addition a positive number? Did the subtraction lead to like a negative uh, overflow? Did it, uh, or, you know, did the addition lead to like a a overflow? Did the subtraction lead to a zero? So on and so forth. Those kind of, details are kind of captured in something called status registers and the EL1 then uh, or the software executing in EL1 has access to the, those kind of things and the kernel then runs here. The user applications run in exception level 0 uh, in which case as you can imagine the, uh, the hardware when it's running in exception level 0 it turns off certain features and so code running here cannot access uh, 
um, you know, such CPU status registers. They, the, I gave you an example of a status register. Some of them, you know, EL0 code can access. Uh, CPU configuration re uh, registers, for example, the EL0 cannot, uh, you know, access. So now you can imagine the kernel is running here, the user code is running here, and so, you know, any access to the hardware that needs to be done, the control needs to be passed from user space, so to speak, which is this, right? From the user space down to the kernel space. And now here's another interesting thing that we need to know, which is from the user space to the kernel space, the control is passed or the requests are made via something called system calls right so system calls uh, is how we essentially um, from the user space ask the kernel space to do something for the user application right so let's say we are wanting to do like a thumbprint verification or thumbprint based authentication the user space will essentially ask the kernel space to kind of go uh, you know do something about the authentication process and just pass you know yes or no one or zero as the answer so the user space app never accesses the thumbprint sensor the fingerprint sensor but now uh, you know the kernel does something around it right all right and how does it do it or what is the way to request from user space to kernel space it's system calls and what are system calls so system calls are essentially a bunch of actions uh, these are bunch of actions that over the years people have realized the developers have or rather the maintainers of the linux kernel the linux kernel development community have realized are common or generic so for example we would want to perform read on let's say the camera buffer and me we might want to perform a write operation on the display buffer you know load data into the display buffer read data out of the camera buffer so read and write for example are uh, such generic option operations operations that we would want to perform on you know different hardware so the system calls are those so somewhere then you know what 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 we can imagine now is that the linux kernel the drivers within that right are somewhere supposed to implement the system calls Somewhere they are supposed to, like when let's say we were asking, hey, can you read, uh, you know, the uh, the image buffer of the camera, then uh, we are essentially saying, hey, driver, uh, who is handling the camera, can you go and read that buffer for us, right? And uh, so somewhere the device drivers, and this is key, by the way, this is like a very important point. So the device drivers somewhere implement they somewhere implement system calls right and we'll take a look at the uh, these and details as we you know develop the code but this background information is an absolute necessary one for you um, so uh, user space is something that you should remember kernel space is something that you should remember privileged non-privileged and the communication between these two happen via system calls and we'll take a look at the system calls in detail as we write our drivers and we also mentioned that the kernel has drivers and the drivers implement the system calls right so with this as the background now let's take a look at how does the linux kernel uh, uh, you know house or hold the drivers within it so let's call this d1 d2 d3 d4 and d5 and this is our kernel so the idea is after boot up if you know the kernel whatever drivers it has if it is using those uh, then we call call them as uh, you know boot time drivers now, this is not a specific uh, 
this is not a standard keyword i'm just uh, coining a term here boot time drivers or you can also say like you know uh, built in uh, built in drivers this is like more accurate honestly right the second one built in drivers and let's say if uh, you know you have a piece of hardware like a camera system you're working on or you know some new uh, fancy device that your team is working on so the driver for that won't be available in the linux kernel community or in the linux kernel source so usually what happens is the the developers uh, they will uh, you know develop that driver and push it to uh, the kernel main line right uh, they'll push it to the main line and then um, they'll kind of download and create like a new kernel image right new or recompile the kernel but when they're developing it you know one of the ways uh, that they can check whether their driver is working correctly or not is by injecting it or loading it into the live system right so you have a linux kernel running you're writing a driver you want to test it out you connect the hardware well right now the linux kernel doesn't have any driver you're writing that driver but because of that it doesn't have now what you want to do is compile your driver and be like okay can i load it into the live system so that i can check whether my driver can handle that interactions with the hardware correctly so those are called the loadable kernel modules modules or you can also call them loadable kernel driver right and this is something that we are going to focus on as part of this course uh, but now when you're essentially you know developing this linux kernel loadable module uh, the idea is that the linux kernel provides you with a way or provides all of us with a way to be able to load that in and what does loading mean and you know uh, what does it mean that you know a driver is loaded and activated you can imagine that the kernel allows us a way to specify how to absorb the driver into a live system and then it kind of activates and initializes and um, uh, that is for later uh, when, as we dive into the code we'll talk about you know how it loads and things of those nature but one other thing i want you to imagine is the idea of constructor and destructor i might have got the spelling wrong here but um, the idea of constructor is when you uh, initialize a class so to speak you execute uh, you know some initialization code and as uh, you know that object goes out of scope uh, we call like the destructor and you know uh, de-initialize or clean up uh, um, the the kind of you know memory that the object acquired and so on and so forth so this is coming from the object oriented pro programming world but somewhere um, the linux kernel provides uh, some feature that is equivalent to constructor and destructor and that's how like as we submit our module loadable module the initialization sequence is called which can you know essentially establish some handshaking or initialization of some state machine that is required in managing the hardware and as we remove that module out of the kernel uh, it will call the cleanup or the destructor sequence uh, we'll dive into this a little more uh, you know as we go along uh, actually a lot more as we go along but for now i just want you to remember privileged non-privileged user space cannot talk to the hardware directly must go through the kernel um, uh, via a device driver and the way user space talks to the kernel space is via um, you know the uh, system calls and the device drivers implement the system calls and then there is this notion of constructor and destructor so if you're clear with all of this so far if you're convinced with this uh, in the next one we'll dive into writing the kernel modules